Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make an ice dyed hoodie. I prepped the hoodie like normal and I don't have it turned inside out. I'd like to spiral the hoodie so I found a place where I'd like to begin the spiral and I'm using a pair of rubber coated tweezers to begin the spiral. I'm going to use some rubber bands to hold the folds in place. Then this time I'm not going to allow the hoodie to dry out. I'm going to go ahead and dye it while it's still damp. This hoodie is actually one that I purchased to tie dye for my son. So I asked him which colors he'd like to have and he chose these three. So I'm using Raven Black, Brushed Steel, and Shiitake Mushroom all from Dharma. Before I begin applying the dye, I'm going to use a washable marker and divide the hoodie into six sections. Then I'm going to make myself an ice barrier using some silicone cake molds and I have a link down below in the description for where I purchased these. I'm going to wrap them around the hoodie and then use a clothespin to hold them together. They're about the same height as the hoodie so I'm going to pull them up just a little bit and make myself a lip so that it will hold the ice on top. I'm going to start by adding brushed steel to one of the sections. I'm only going to apply dye to every other section. I do want to leave a little bit of the original color of the hoodie. This hoodie I purchased from Old Navy and it is kind of an off-white or a beige color. The next color I'm using is Raven. And in the final section, I'm going to add the shiitake mushroom. I'm also going to add a line of the raven on one side of the shiitake mushroom and on one side of the brushed steel. Then I'm going to add a line of brushed steel right beside one side of the raven. Now I'm going to add on a little bit of soda ash and a layer of ice. Because I don't have a real tall ice barrier, I can't put quite as much ice on the hoodie at one time. After this first layer of ice melted, I came back and added a second layer to this side. After the second layer of ice melted, I checked the hoodie and some of the color or dye had started to come through to the back side, but not a whole lot. So I decided to go ahead and turn the hoodie over and add dye to the back side as well. So here's what it looks like after I turned the hoodie over. And as you can see, there is a little bit of dye coming through to the back, but not a whole lot. It's not going to have as much dye on the back side of the hoodie as I want. So I want to go ahead and just add more. Some of the colors though have kind of started to run, so it's a little bit difficult to see exactly where I want to apply the dye. So I'm using a washable marker to draw myself some guidelines on where to apply the dye to the back. Then I'm going to add the ice barrier back around the shirt and apply the same colors on the back side. This time though, I'm not going to add the little accent lines. I'm just going to apply brushed steel, shiitake mushroom and raven in all of the main sections. 
I'm also going to add just a little bit of additional soda ash and a layer of ice. After the first layer melted, I went ahead and added a second layer of ice to the back side as well. Then I allowed the hoodie to process for about 24 to 48 hours after the second layer of ice melted. I'm going to rinse the hoodie the same way that I would a traditional shirt. I'm going to begin in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. And then after I've rinsed for a while in cold water, I'm going to gradually warm up the water to hot and continue rinsing to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. Because this hoodie is so thick, I instead of just continuing to rinse in hot water for a really long time, I'm going to go ahead and allow it to soak. I'm going to put a little bit of hot water into my utility sink along with a small squirt of Blue Dawn dish detergent and just allow the hoodie to soak. When the water cooled off, I came back and changed it out and I continued that soaking process several times until the water was almost clear. Then I put the hoodie along with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent into my washing machine and I washed it using a hot water cycle. And after it was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. So what do you guys think? I really like this one. I think it turned out looking really cool. The three colors that he chose are all colors that have a lot of color splits in them. So there is such a variety of colors on this hoodie. I think it looks really interesting. I ended up with some yellow color splits, some red, blue, some green. There's also some teal in the shirt and I think that probably comes from either the raven or the brushed steel. I don't know, but it looks really cool. So I definitely got a variety of different color splits on the shirt. I also like the fact that I ended up with quite a bit of the original color hoodie showing. I think that the beige or taupe color of that hoodie blends really well with these colors. It looks a little lighter on the photograph than it really is. If you remember when I was tying it, it's more of like a kind of a taupey beige color. It looks a little bit whiter on this photo, but it's really not quite this light. I'm glad I added color to the back side too. I don't think that I would have gotten saturation all the way through to the back side of this hoodie if I would have just left it with what I did to the front. Normally I can get by with just a traditional shirt or even a long sleeve shirt with adding color to the front and adding a couple different layers of ice to force the color through to the back. But this hoodie is just too thick to have done that with. So overall, I really like it. And more importantly, he loves it. He thinks it turned out really cool. But what do you guys think? Drop me a comment down below and let me know. And I sure would appreciate it if you would like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.